is Cleveland real estate investing a scam? What? Is it a scam for people to sell out-of-state investors like you properties in Cleveland, right? You guys are out there. You're probably watching this show because you live in an expensive market. And you're seeing all these cheap properties in the Cleveland area. And you're like, man, if only I could get a property like that where I live for that price. Man, I'm just going to buy all these Cleveland houses. I buy 100 of them for the price of like 10 in my market. It's got to be great. Or is it too good to be true? Are people scamming out-of-state investors like you? This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV, and this is the place to be if you're trying to become or continue being a Cleveland real estate investor. More specifically, though, an educated Cleveland real estate investor. More specifically, a Cleveland real estate investor who knows about the good in the bad when it comes to investing in Cleveland real estate. Many of you folks are like my client that I am working with today. Her name is Trisha, and she is from Southern California. Now, Trisha, your story resonates with me, and it resonates with a lot of the other people that watch Holton Wise TV because you're just a regular gal, you're a teacher. Your husband's a firefighter, right? Two solid, salt-of-the-earth, blue-collar careers, and you guys have saved up some money, and you're looking to invest that money to better your lives, right? You're not some big syndicate, right? You're not some large, evil corporation, right? You're good quality Americans, and you're just trying to find a good deal so you can do better for your family. Now... You can't invest in SoCal, right? You guys don't have enough money to get involved in Southern California real estate investing, right? You're a teacher. He's a firefighter. You guys are not multimillionaires. You're regular people, and I love that, and so are the majority of the other folks out there that are watching Holton Wise TV. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of motherfuckers out here in the Cleveland area that will pray on regular people like you try to sell you a bill of goods try to scam you right now it's not hard to do because the pricing you see here in cleveland you're like wow how is it that cheap i can't possibly lose i couldn't buy a freaking parking lot in southern california for the price that this whole house, this whole duplex is, right? But there's more. There's more to that. It's not a must win just because it's so cheap. You might be looking at what we like to call looking at it without a state eyes. You might be looking at it without a state eyes thinking it's so goddamn cheap you can't lose. But that is not always the case. We need to dig deeper. We need to get under the skin of the investment, so to speak. Really really makes some sense with it, right? You made the comment to me that your husband thinks you're crazy to invest in real estate. I don't agree. I don't think you're crazy to invest in real estate, but I will agree uh, that you would be crazy to invest in real estate if you did so without the proper knowledge and education of the market. And that's why you're smart. You came here, Trisha, before you pulled the trigger on this duplex that you sent me. You came here to get my take on it, right? What you did is you asked me to analyze this duplex. Apparently, you've got uh, five separate duplexes under contract uh, with some Cleveland real estate agents, okay? This is one of them. Now, this analysis is just going to be based on this duplex. I have not uh, reviewed the rest of your properties yet, okay? This is specifically what I say today will be related to this property that you sent me in this property alone. And then real quick, before we get into the meat and potatoes on this property, my thoughts on this property, whether or not I think it's a good deal. Everyone else out there, if you're watching this, you're thinking about getting involved in Cleveland real estate, boom, right there, 
work with me one-on-one -on -one like Trisha and her husband are doing, you could also click the link in the notes below. Fill out the form, book a call, my team will call you, we'll talk to you, or you could just click the link below, like I said. Uh, sign up to get your own personalized shows in real time. This property, folks, I sent this to uh, Trisha and her husband privately months ago, okay? I only released these things publicly on Holton Wise TV after the dust settles on the deal. So if you want to actually have me work with you one-on-one -on -one in real time, you got to sign up to do your own show like Trisha has. Now, with all that said, Trisha, let me take a quick break. I'm going to pull the property up on the screen here. We're going to go over everything, and I'm going to let you know if this is the right move for you and your husband or if this is the wrong move. And if it's the wrong move, I'm going to tell you why. If it's the right move, I'm going to tell you how much money you guys going to make. Two, please. Welcome back. Now we get into what you're all paying for, right? This is the money shop, baby. This is what you're paying the money for. And this, folks, this is the best motherfucking money you're ever going to spend, okay? Here is the property at hand. 13401 Graham Road, East Cleveland, 44112. You put it under contract, okay? Like I said, you got this bad boy under contract. You need to know if it is a good deal. It has been on the market for seven days. Your husband thinks you're batshit crazy if you buy it. Well, I mean, not just this. Your husband thinks you're batshit crazy if you buy any real estate. I don't agree with that, but I do agree with your husband that if you were to buy this property for this price, you are, in fact batshit crazy but you're not batshit crazy uh, Trisha, because you knew that you needed to come here first you knew that you can't fucking spend a hundred thousand dollars on a cleveland duplex until you talk to your boy jay wise to get the fucking lay of the land that's why you guys are here okay here is the deal i started this show off talking about real estate scams or this or that okay look those are fucking hot button words. All right, let's be let's be real, okay? I'm gonna get a shit ton more clicks on this show when I say things like that uh, than if I say like nah, number analysts of this uh, four thousand square foot duplex. Nah. Nobody's clicking on that shit, okay? I get paid by views, people. Come on. So, uh, with that said, I want to set you guys up with some information here, right? I'm not. I am not accusing this seller. Uh, or their realtor for uh, of like running a scam. I'm not saying uh, what they're. I'm not saying they've like purposely said any mistruths to you. But what I am gonna tell you is that owner hired a realtor to do one thing and one thing only. That is sell this property. That realtor does not work for you. That realtor works for that seller. That realtor's job is to make this property appear to be as dope as it possibly can my job is to give you the real information because you pay me to work on your behalf i don't know this seller i don't know this real estate agent i don't have anything to do with them i work for you and you alone and this is my complete unbiased thoughts on this particular property fuck this property this property fucking sucks as an investment for you this property could eat these nuts, okay? You would be batshit crazy to buy this property for $99,000, which is what you have it under contract for, right? Now, again, you told me you have some other ones under contract. Haven't looked at them. If you want, send those over. I'll give you the same unbiased opinion. But here is why this property fucking sucks, right? As far as the actual house itself, I don't see any red flags or any issues there, okay? It is a big old Cleveland duplex, East Cleveland duplex to be specific. That's that's really important here, right? And the sellers are projecting to you a huge amount of rent, right? What they got, they, th this is cool too, right? They got five beds, one bath in each unit. So it's a total 
of 10 beds. It's a huge, huge property, okay? And they did the very smart move. Strategically, it makes a lot of sense to go Section 8, right? You got to go Section 8 when the properties are in high-risk areas. But here's the first issue I have, right? They're saying one unit brings in 950, and they're saying the market value of the other Section 8 unit is 1,222. So it's $2,172 of government-guaranteed rent, 26064 for the year. But the issue I have with this is I, have, I do a lot of Section 8. I've never seen uh, the government pay out uh, 1222. $1,222 for a duplex unit. I've never seen it. I think I think that's probably optimistic. Now, the 950 they're actually getting from the other unit, yeah, that's reasonable, right? But let's just even say the rents are going to be what they're saying, right? Obviously, $2,172 a month for a $100,000 property, right? You could do your or your normal numbers and your projections and this or that under normal si uh, circumstances, and you're going to get a cash-on-cash cash return that is fucking huge. It's great. It's amazing. It'll look awesome. If we're talking apples to apples and you can get over $2,000 a month in rent for a $100,000 duplex with Section 8 tenants under normal circumstances, that's a great fucking deal. That's a goddamn home run. That's like That's awesome, right? No questions asked. You fucking buy that deal every day. But that is not enough that is not deep enough right here's the problem we can't run normal projections on this right because this area okay this area is so distressed this is like literally one of the shittiest cities in america right and i'm not saying that based on conjecture or opinion if you look at things like median home value crime the fact that the city government itself is either bankrupt currently or on the brink of being bankrupt at the moment uh it, it's a whole mess they don't have like the money to pay for uh services that the residents in their area needs right now this is one thing that's incredibly important something i really need to make clear to you which a lot of people from california or outside of the cleveland market are not aware of east cleveland is not the same city as cleveland okay Cleveland is its own city. East Cleveland is a suburb of Cleveland. So the things I say about the East Cleveland government, it's not the same as Cleveland. Also, there's another suburb out here called Cleveland Heights. Three independent areas, folks. Three independent governments, okay? So with this, East Cleveland, I can't project to you uh, – what I believe you'll be able to keep every year out of that 26 k that's scheduled to come in claimed by the seller. I can't tell you that. I don't know, okay? It's too much of a shit show over there uh, for me to try to project that out for you, right? Here's the thing. Holton Wise, basically biggest name in the game in this industry. And then there's a couple other competitors we have uh, that do decent-sized businesses. And then there's just a bunch of bottom feeders, a bunch of Craigslist cowboys, a bunch of unlicensed motherfuckers, right, running illegal PM games. The big dogs, Holton Wise and some of our bigger competitors, almost never take on property management clients in East Cleveland. It's just such a sh it's, it's a crapshoot, right, just such a crapshoot uh, that the bigger companies, uh, we just turn down the work, right? Selling properties in East Cleveland, that's fine. Broken real estate, that's... No problem. It doesn't really matter to me if things are dangerous over there, if I'm looking at it through that lens. But to actually be on the ground physically managing these properties, uh, the bigger companies, we understand that we run into some issues that will have a negative impact on our business, right? Issue number one, it's hard to staff. It's hard to staff our companies uh, with, like, construction workers, maintenance guys, leasing agents, things of that nature, right? It's a very dangerous neighborhood, okay? If you were to look up the crime statistics, it's dangerous. It really is. And people uh, that are working for us, if they're constantly being uh, put into those neighborhoods, right, you, you run into higher turnover. And, folks, we're living in uh, – end of 2021 post-COVID world, there's like a labor shortage out there. It's like hard to staff people uh, for your companies. And property management as, as an industry already has a pretty high turnover rate, right? So that would just make running a management and construction and maintenance, like landscaping, it would just make that too problematic, too hard to staff your company. That's one issue. The other issue is it's so unpredictable uh, with the issues that come with a neighborhood that is uh, as distressed as this one is, it's really hard to project to investors like you, like how much money you're going to make. Like I literally have no idea. It's like completely blind. I don't know. It could go good, could go bad, could go horrible. Like whatevs, dude. It's too unpredictable. When you go up 
the chain, right? I made this thing. It's called the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods. It's graded all neighborhoods, A to F scale. F, highest risk, lowest, uh, lowest prices. This is an F grade neighborhood. East Cleveland's on my guide as an F grade neighborhood. A, highest price, lowest risk, right? But A doesn't typically work for rental property investors either, right? The cash uh, price to rent ratios don't work. Those are areas that are uh, prices are driven by owner occupant people. So I'm not like, yeah, oh, oh, buy an F grade property if you're a rental investor, buy an A grade property. I'm not saying that. I don't think A grade properties work better either. I personally think like out of state investors, uh, looking for long term, lower income cash flow, do best in like B, C, and D, right? Somewhere in there. That's probably where we need to fit you. I don't think you need to be on the outside either way. I don't think you need to be on the outside A. I don't think you need to be out on the outside F, right? Uh, with A grade, again, the price to rent ratios won't make sense. With F grade, it's just highly distressed, and you don't have the advantage of what locals do, which is being able to do the stuff yourself. You can't do anything. You have to pay people to do all the work for you because you're in Southern California, right? Uh, so you don't get that, and you're relying on other people to do the work. But as I just explained, bigger companies like mine don't take on the work because the money you're paying us is not enough. Uh, for, for the amount of issues we face as a company. It makes staffing our companies harder, and it's hard to project to you returns so that what everybody does, everybody who gets into real estate investing that's brand new, when their investment doesn't work out, they go, ah, must be a property manager. It's never that you bought a shit fucking box house, right? You bought a shit box house in a shit box neighborhood that's got a shit box government that's fucking broke, right? Your property manager can't fix that. These are situations out of your property manager's control, okay? Like, folks, that's just how it is, right? Like, when you get people uh, that come out of jail, right? Like felons, right? Ex-cods, right? Like, it's very hard to uh, to find housing if you're an ex-con, right? Most landlords will deny you. So, like, where do you think people like that end up? They end up in, like, a place with the lowest quality stuff, right? So, like, when that's the kind of tenant pool you're dealing with, like, yeah, it's not going to go well. That's just how that's how it goes, right? If you're a local investor, uh, you could be on top of that, get a lot of sweat equity, and you could really understand the market. And you, you could fare well. People do fare well in neighborhoods like this. I'm not saying nobody can make money in this neighborhood. That's not true. A lot of people can make a lot of money. But I don't believe a teacher and a firefighter who've never invested before from Southern California could make money in this neighborhood in general. That's one. But that. All of that, everything I just said, fuck all that. Don't even think about that. Everything in this video I've said up till now, forget all that. If none of what I said resonates with you, or if none of what I just said uh, rings true to you, look at what I'm about to tell you right now. And also, you have to say, as a prudent, disciplined investor, fuck this deal, okay? You have it under contract for $99,000. $99, and the price to rent ratio is like over two grand a month. Looking at that and that alone, that's great. Let's pretend everything I've been telling you, none of that makes sense. And you think the risk level of this neighborhood is uh, appropriate for your investing. And you're not worried that the bigger companies like my company just won't take on your work. You don't have a problem going to those unlicensed Craigslist cowboys, which are the only kind of uh, property managers that take on distressed assets like this. You have no problem hiring them, which I didn't even get into. That creates like a whole new layer of difficulty, right? If you can't hire the legitimate companies in town, uh, your level of risk is like compounded, right? Like, cause like you can't even get people that are proven in the industry. So now you got workers that are working for you that haven't proven themselves in the industry. But again, we're going to pretend none of that is in play here. And we're just going to look at the price, $99,900 or $99,000, right? Well, guess what? I pulled the comps, okay? And this is a distressed area. So a lot of properties do not typically trade very often in a distressed area. I pulled quarter mile comps, quarter mile duplexes. You're under contract for almost $100,000 on this duplex. I pulled the comps for two years. These are all the duplexes that sold in a quarter mile of your property for the last two years. Normally when I pull comps, I pull them quarter mile uh, within the last six months. But a highly populated area like this, that should generate like 30 to 40 comps. It did not. It only generated like one or two. So I had to pull comps for the last two years because it's a stress. Not a lot of properties are trading. These are the price points the properties have sold for. These are all the properties that have sold within a quarter mile of yours all right one sold in july seven grand another one 14 grand another one 
16 grand. Another one, 20. Another one, 20. Another one, 28. One sold for 36. One sold for 42. One sold for 45. One sold for 52. All right, these are all the properties that <laughs> sold in the last two years. Best case scenario, the thing is worth half of what you're paying. So you would, in a best case scenario, lose $50,000 the moment you closed on this property. So all the stuff I said in the beginning, all that rings true. But if we're just saying don't worry about that, you can't do the deal because in the best case scenario, the day you buy it, you just lost fifty thousand dollars and this folks what you just watched today on this show this is why if you're going to invest in the cleveland market you want to make sure you don't get your ass handed to you i mean you can never prevent losing money in real estate but you can mitigate your risks as much as you possibly can if that's what you want to do you're interested in getting in this market you bet your ass you better send your deals to me here on holton wise tv before you just fucking lose 50 grand click the link below thanks for watching subscribe to holton wise tv for more financial information education and entertainment